Thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, so I'm going to talk about the, the title, uh, The Persistence of Relative Equilibria uh, under Symmetry Breaking uh, Perturbations. Perturbation. So this is uh, a work with uh, uh, with James, who is here. Uh, so the setting I will start with will be like uh, G will be a connected uh, compact Lie group, uh, and it acts on a symplectic manifold. And the action is Hamiltonian uh, with, with a moment map uh, phi g from m to the Lie algebra, uh, dual of the Lie algebra of g. Uh, and when it, it will be supposed to be quadrant equivalent. And so I will write always uh, the quadruple here, which will be a Hamiltonian uh, g manifold. And I will also take. Hamiltonian, which are like G invariant function on M. And so I can get a Hamiltonian vector field, which is G equivalent. So now that you have this G equivalent Hamiltonian, you have equation of motion with group of symmetry, which is G. And what we are interested in is like we perturb those equations so that uh, there are still some symmetries that remain, which form a subgroup of G. And we look at uh, the, uh, the relative equilibria, which will uh, persist under this perturbation. So the, the first definition will be if I take a least subgroup of G, uh, then uh, an H perturbation. So H in this talk will always be a G invariant. Uh, H perturbation of H. is a family of Hamiltonian functions, which depend on a parameter and which are H invariant, such that at zero, you get the G invariant Hamiltonian. And uh, there's some smoothness condition in the parameters. So you can take the parameters being in R or in a vector space, uh, this map is smooth. So this will be my H perturbation. And uh, the first before starting with relative equilibria, I will give a, a motivating example, toy example, for simply uh, equilibria, which is easier. So equilibria are just fixed points for the dynamics. So point M, such that a vector field that M like van vanishes. So this example, you take a cylinder with coordinates uh, Z and angle coordinate theta. And S1 action here. So this will be uh, my group. G, so this is my group G. And I take a, a family of Hamiltonian, which is of that form. Uh, so this is, uh, the, 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 there is a kinetic Hamiltonian plus I perturb it with a potential term. So in that case, when the parameter is like a zero, you just have this kinetic part, which is invariant under the whole S1 action. There's also a Z2 discrete action that I do, does not really contribute in the end, so I, I don't take it. But here, G um, will be the whole S1. And when I add this potential, like I break the symmetry into a, a, a diadral action, so that's a diadral group, a group of symmetry of a triangle with six elements. And uh, if you look now, 
if you calculate the just the equilibria of this uh, H zero, you you find like this point M, which is a point of coordinates like zero zero, and because it's G invariant, actually the whole orbit is made of equilibria of uh, H zero. So this will be the equilibria of H, which is H zero. And now, so this circle, if you take the, com the perturbation, and here you can calculate directly the other equilibria. There are like six of them here. And so, and each three of them like form an um, equilateral triangle. So they actually uh, form 2D3 orbit. Uh, so, so there are six equilibria of H lambda form uh, two D three orbits. And in that case, like they remain uh, on the orbit of the point M. Uh, but in general, when you do the perturbation, like they can move a bit vertically. Uh, here they are all in the same level of the moment map. So in general, for equilibria, what we have, um, in general, like for any subgroup and a general Hamiltonian, um, for um, so there is no 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 no. So if M M is a non-degenerate, so here non-degenerate means within the most both sense, uh, non-degenerate uh, equilibrium of the unperturbed Hamiltonian, uh, then there is a neighborhood U in M, neighborhood of the G orbit of the equilibria. So here this will be our circle, uh, such that for lambda sufficiently small, uh, H lambda has at least this number of H orbits of equilibria in, in U. So this is something local. So this number is a lustonic schneerman category uh, in the equivalent setting of the group orbit. This is topologically the group orbit. So this means it's the least number of H invariant upon subset, which are contractible onto a H orbit, uh, which are like sufficient to cover this, this, this space, so it's a topological invariant. And here, like when we found two, actually, um, this is exactly cat D2 of here, the orbit, because the action is free here, it's just S1, so it's D3. So you need here only two, this is one open set, like this union of those, and they retract onto one D3 orbit, and you need two to cover the whole thing, so, so you get this. So this is for equilibria. Uh, now when you look, now we, we jump to um, relative equilibria because for this, like, there's no moment map. So maybe I recall um, a, rel a relative equilibrium we we'll write it like that, uh, of H. Uh, which is old, always like G invariant, is a pair of a point in M and an element of the Lie algebra of G, which is the velocity, um, such that the Hamiltonian vector field of H at the point M is pointing in the direction of the group orbit. So this is precisely uh, and has velocity size, so it's precisely the infinitesimal generator at M, and the, it's an element of the tangent space of uh, the group orbit. So normally we say relative equilibrium is a point M with velocity C psi, uh, but if the action is not free, this psi like is not unique. So if I take just a pair, it makes it kind of uh, unique, but equivalently, um, uh, this is a relative equilibria if M is a critical point 
of the augmented Hamiltonian, uh, which is h minus phi g of m of xi. Uh, so it means this is this is a critical point of the Hamiltonian restricted to a level set of the moment map. And this xi here plays the role of a Lagrange multiplier. So I will use uh, this definition like seeing relative equilibria as critical point of, of uh, this. And so now if I want, th 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 this is the invariant. If I consider perturbation, like they become h invariant. And here I will have to take the moment map with respect to the H action. So when I have a subgroup uh, in G, I have a, an inclusion of the, the algebra. And I also have the dual, which is uh, the projection given by restrictions of linear forms. And then I can set that phi H which is a composition of phi h, oh, oh sorry, phi g, which goes for m to h star. This is a, a moment map uh, for, for the h action, for, for the h action on, on m, which is like still Hamiltonian. And if, if I take, I have a point m in m, and I write mu, uh, the image on the, the moment map, so that the mo momentum, uh, then I will call alpha the restriction of mu to the least of algebra. This will be the image under phi h of my point m. And uh, what we have is that the level set phi minus 1 of mu is inside uh, the level set for the H action of A. In fact, this level set is foliated by all the level sets of that form with different mu's, which all are projected through this map on the same uh, alpha. And uh, so, did I? So now I can, I can state the main result. If I take a Hamiltonian G manifold, uh, G, I uh, have this Hamiltonian, which is the invariant, have a subgroup of G, and M psi inside M. So now I take uh, equilibrium, a relative equilibrium with velocity in H, but not in G, um, is a relative equilibrium of, of H. Then if I have those hypotheses, so that this guy is, uh, oh sorry, with let's say sets mu, will be the momentum, the image, and alpha will be the restriction of mu on the list of algebra. So this guy is say, said to be alpha non-degenerate. Uh, it has to be alpha non-degenerate plus other uh, technical assumptions, like including uh, that uh, these are the list of algebra of the respective stabilizers. The G acts here on the uh, dual of the Lie algebra and uh, by, by the quadrant action and here on the, by the adjoint action of, on the Lie algebra. So here it means that just mu has to be a bit more regular than, than psi. But so if you have those things, this I will explain later, then, um, uh, then there is there is a neighborhood inside the level set 
So you can also take alpha regular value, so it's a manifold. There's a neighborhood of the G mu orbit of M and the neighborhood uh, V inside L cross H of 0 psi. So this will be uh, for the parameter lambda, and this is for the velocity, uh, such that um, for as long as you take a parameter lambda and a velocity inside this neighborhood, then there is, there is a function which is smooth and which is defined on the orbit of M, like for G mu orbit, uh, and which is H mu invariant. So here H mu is H intersection uh, G mu. Uh, and this function depends on the two parameters. Uh, there is such a function such that uh, its critical point are in one-to-one -one correspondence uh, with those of uh, the augmented Hamiltonian pattern uh, restricted to U. So, so this guy, let me, let me write it. This is H lambda, now I perturb the Hamiltonian. And here I cannot, I take the, the H moment map. So it's the same as uh, the augmented Hamiltonian, but for the perturb Hamiltonian. So it's just H, H invariant. So the critical point of here inside this neighborhood are actually those of such a function which is H mu invariant and which is just defined on the group orbit. And uh, if I draw a picture, uh, Uh, so what we have here is that there's this level set phi g minus 1 of mu. Inside it, there is m, relative equilibrium. Here, uh, there's a g mu orbit of m. In, in general, if the group is non-abelian, like if you take the whole g orbit, uh, it's not inside the level set. It's like transversal for regular values. So there's just this part of the orbit, which is inside, and all around this is living inside uh, the level set for, for H, alpha with being uh, U restricted to H. And you take this neighborhood U, so it's a neighborhood inside this guy around this orbit. And now this assumption of uh, being alpha non-degenerate, it means that you ask here, do you have this orbit, you have this neighborhood, and you take a normal subspace. So it's not symplectic slice, uh, if you know symplectic slice. Symplectic slice is like here. Well, it's two-dimensional, but I cannot draw it. So there's symplectic slice for the G action, uh, plus some other direction. So let's call this guy N. And alpha non-degenerate, it means that the action of, or augmented Hamiltonian we started with, so the first one, restricted to, uh, oh sorry, at, at M. Uh, this quadratic form is uh, non-singular. This is alpha non-degenerate, and it al allows you to use uh, uh, implicit function theorem at some point, because you reduce the problem of finding uh, the equilibria, which are like critical points. Uh, to find uh, the critical points of like a function which is very implicit, uh, but which is defined only in the group variable. So you get rid of those normal variables that are, that are here and it's under this non-degeneracy assumption. Um, so what did I want to say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a consequence is that now we can use a lustonic Stirlman theory. Uh, maybe I, I, uh, I mentioned it just here, but the lustonic Stirlman uh,
says that if you have um, a function which is just C2, doesn't have to be C infinity, which is G invariant on a defined on a let, let's take M compact, doesn't have to be, but let's take, let's take M compact. Here our group is compact, so everything is fine. Uh, this, then uh, the critical point, uh, oh, sorry, the G orbits of critical points of F, so the number of G orbit is bounded below by this um, topological invariant. So that's what we, we use here because we reduce the problem of finding the critical point of this function. So we are left here. So the corollary is that um, um, there is U, so there is a neighborhood. No, well, I want to write under, under the hypothesis of the theorem um, for lambda sufficiently small, uh, H lambda has at least, has at least this number. So here, uh, the manifold, uh, this is o o M here is this group. And this is uh, G which appear here. So it's got H mu of G mu over G M, uh, H mu orbit of relative equilibria in U with velocity. So here it's not, we started with this velocity psi in H, but here, as you see, the, the velocity, uh, the new velocity is like in a neighborhood. So with velocity, um, close to psi. So this is uh, the consequence. And now I, uh, oh no, I have five minutes. Uh, I, uh, so I wanted to illustrate Well, I wanted to show to show this for the spherical uh, pendulum on uh, the three sphere. So, example. So, spherical pendulum on the three sphere. Oh, sorry. You take the pairs like x are in a cotangent bundle of R S three. So, I identify it with pair of points in R three and four such that the so y is the velocity, so it's perpendicular for dot product on R four. Uh, you take here the group being SO four uh, and the moment map. Uh, so di uh, it acts by uh, diagonally on the group here, and the momentum map is like uh, the wedge product. This is the dual of the Lie algebra. Um, and now we can see you can see the, the, the Hamiltonian of the spherical pendulum as being a perturbation of the uh, geodesic flow on the three sphere, and you add this potential. So this is a first uh, canonical basis on R four. This is a, so it's like a, the spherical pendulum on the, the, the sphere, and so when lambda equals to zero, you have symmetry group and so forth. And when h, uh, when, when you add lambda, so lambda not zero, uh, the, 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 the little h is a stabilizer, which is just a copy of SO3 uh, into SO4. And well, though, though I, I actually don't have time, but uh, you can, you can uh, find a non-degenerate for, for lambda equals to zero, so unperturbed. Um, a non-degenerate uh, relative equilibria uh, of h, which is h0, with a velocity that I, I choose uh, as being. So this is Lie algebra of this group of rotation. And this is the standard hat map. So get a skew symmetry 
matrix from a vector in R3 that I choose being this one, so it's a choice of velocity. Uh, so we find this velocity and uh, the uh, relative equilibrium uh, is uh, with, with M, which is E1, E2, uh, as a pair E1, E2, so first canon, uh, vector. And uh, so it gives you if here there is a three and this is the direction pointing by or omega that we chose. Here I just embedded in R4, so that gives you the direction. And here you have the hyperplane perpendicular to it. And here you get a two sphere here. So this equilibrium like E1, like is moving around this uh, two sphere and E2 like gives you the, 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 the velocity, um, the Y component. Yeah. So we start with this, uh, we, we have this, the, this uh, relative equilibrium for H0 and after you can, you can calculate like uh, for H lambda and actually you get only one, one solution and um, you, you also see uh, in the calculation that the velocity that is permissible to have an equilibrium is like something which is close to uh, this one. And you also have the condition that lambda has to be uh, small enough. So, so we get on only one by direct calculation, but we, uh, if, if, if I just apply what's happening here, if I just calcu calculate this, g mu over gm, m being this guy, uh, so in that case, uh, the momentum mu is, in this case, the momentum mu is equal to psi, where dual Lie algebra is identified with uh, the Lie algebra. And so h mu for, for, for in, in, this, in this example is just SO3, and uh, this is SO3, and, and this is an SO2. So you get here a two sphere, and so the only open subset uh, SO3 invariant contractible onto an SO3 orbit is just uh, one. But I have no time, but you, you can do everything um, explicitly. Thank you. They are close. I mean, they are in a. They, 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 these are in a neighborhood of. So you take you take a neighborhood, of, uh, of psi into this vector space. So. Psi is in H to be Ah, okay. So you start with the only size of the group two. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah, one. Just to perceive. 